a 2017 Shelby GT350R, my personal vehicle now. I uh, wanted to go ahead and give you a little bit of a run out. So we are in sport steering, sport suspension, and we've gone ahead and turned on the exhaust to sport mode, which absolutely transforms this car, as you'll see on the one of the clips here. I do a cold start for you. So let's see what she does here. What's up guys, my name is Adam. Welcome back to Driven Productions. Hope you enjoyed that front montage. I think that was one of my favorites. So we've got the GT350R on the channel again today. This is the third time we have featured a Shelby GT350R and this one is a cream puff. Only 3,628 miles and this one's never been tracked. These tires have not been heat soaked. These wonderful 305, 315 Cup 2s are still very, very nice. They are the original tires and you can see here, they still got some life left. Uh, this is a very heavy car. You would heat soak those tires quick and you'd probably be maybe seven, eight sessions and you probably want to change them out because these are not the lightest cars. But this is one of my all time favorite cars, guys. And I'm going to tell you all about it today. I'm going to tell you why you're going to want to buy one of these. I'm going to tell you all the things that make it a 350 quote R and not a 350. And uh, so let's get into it, shall we? All right, this is an R because you've got the down splitters here. You've got additional arrow. All along the side of the car, you've got the carbon fiber wheels. Now these go between four to 5,000, at least they used to, per, per wheel. So you're talking about a twenty dollars to $25,000 set of wheels on this car. I wish they had gone with some center lock wheels here versus these weird five lug nuts, but it is what it is. I wish they had at least painted them black, but they didn't. It is what it is. You've also got this carbon fiber wing here. This is just painted. It's a really good looking wing. You really do feel the downforce hunker in the back down, especially at high speeds. You've got the quad exhaust here. You got this killer diffuser. Looks really, really good. And uh, overall, guys, they've done a little bit more suspension tuning on these as well. Now, they do come with these Recaro seats when you get the R, whereas if you get the 350, you can get more of the comfort seats. And those are nice, especially on the 500, because they have heated and cooled functionality. Now, these obviously don't, but they're decent. They've got Alcantara. They've got nice cloth here as well. You've got your ability to put your racing harnesses in. However, outside of that, guys, not a lot of frills. I will hit the highlights with you, though. First of all, I love that these are analog gauges. I'm not a huge fan of the Dark Horse, which this whole area here is nothing but screens, as I've seen. I really All right, let's turn her on so you can see what I, uh, what I mean. Angry. When you go to change the exhaust, listen to this. Crazy. The car actually has a shake to it. It's just really something. But listen to that. Really, really, really incredible sounding engine and exhaust. It's why you buy the car. Um, but you can change here your steering feel, your suspension feel here. You've got normal and sport. You've got your wheel here that you can adjust, comfort, normal, and sport. You've got your uh, ability to look at your gauges here. This is always what I keep it on here. So you, you can see here, fun things like air fuel engine temp. You got oil pressure PSI, oil temp. This is number 829. And really guys, outside of that, there's not that much. Mostly cheap plastic here. You've got Alcantara and uh, really cheap plastic here. Nothing, nothing fancy here. Plastic, plastic, right? Plastic covers here, plastic on the speaker here, plastic, right? This is all your economy car. Back here, you've got no rear seats. This is obviously the race car. You do have two cup holders, but again, plastic, right? Now I like that this is not carbon fiber here. 
Uh, my last two were carbon fiber. This is actually the other material, but I actually think this punches it up a little bit. It's just nice. It doesn't also show fingerprints where the carbon fiber does. And this does have where you plug in your phone for the blue sync so you can get Apple CarPlay. You know, other than, I mean, I like the red start button in here, guys, but you know, you've got your uh, blue link here and a few other things, but in the end of the day, it's, it's just nothing that great. You buy this car because, look at this view. Is this not beautiful? By the way, I cannot wait to move into the garage and to start shooting content in there in an air-conditioned environment. It's going to be incredible. But anyway, I digress. You buy this car because of the 5.2 liter Voodoo you know, engine. This is a flat plane crank V8, makes 529 horsepower, 400 and I think it's 426 foot-pounds of torque. Really, really linear. You got to run this engine out to get the power, guys. I'm telling you, it goes all the way to 8250. And if you're sitting around three, 4,000 coming out of turns, you're really not going to have the kind of power you're looking for out of this car. So you got to run it out. It does not have auto blip technology in it. So you're going to have to heel toe or at least learn how to match those shifts as fast as you can. To try not to upset the balance of the car. Now, this is a 100% stock engine. These are hand assembled. You can see here, this gentleman here went ahead and built her. And overall, guys, a really, really nice looking power plant. The only thing I don't like about this whole area here is the hood is very heavy. They went with the standard uh, Ford Mustang hood. It's very, it's got a lot of weight to it. I also wish they had just give you some hood struts. This just seems so crazy on a car that costs this much money. This was a $68,000 MSRP car. You guys know during COVID, you would be really hard pressed getting this car for anything less than maybe $90,000 on the used car market, especially an example like this, which only had uh, 3,600 miles on it. This was probably a $95,000 car. These are now coming back down to 85,000, maybe even 80. You know, if you find a, a motivated buyer, you can probably get it for even 75 grand. So these have definitely come down a good deal. Now, is this ever gonna be worth less than MSRP? I think yes, as, you know, if you put a lot of miles on it, you track it, you beat on it, you use it as it was intended, then yeah, I do think it's going to lose some value. However, if you're going to have a little cream puff like this one, probably this not. Engine, the engine, the vibrations, everything just hunkers down. It feels so good to go fast, you know? This is one of those cars, the faster you drive, the faster you run the engine out, the faster you shift, the better it feels, right? It's very much like a 911. You know, if you just baby a 911, they're not that fun. As soon as you start banging them off the rev limiter, right? They're, they're incredible. That's this car in a nutshell. I'm telling you, you'll love it. It's so much fun. So that's my initial thoughts on it. And uh, let's get, let's take it for a little drive. All right, guys, here's a really honest 350R drive. Okay. Now, first of all, my driveway is pretty steep. So when I come out of it, I actually have to take it at an angle. I can't just take it straight on. That front splitter will scrape even on that incline. And same thing with this little step right here, right? I have to go ahead and cut it. So if you have a 350R versus a 350, when you've got that front splitter, you're gonna have to be really mindful of driveway, lips, and just pretty much speed bumps and everything. Everything's gonna have to be taken at an angle. It's livable, but it's definitely something you're going to have to pay attention to, I promise. Now, first thing, clutch. Tremec six speed, clutch release, pretty high when you go to put it in first it literally takes about a good inch to an inch and a half before the car will do anything as far as engagement after that point it's a very easy and very forgiving clutch the tremec is actually wonderful in this car it really is guys it handles the torque and the power very easily and it's a really great dual personality car from that point of view you could absolutely daily drive this in traffic when I'm just buttering around right now, it's very easy to shift smooth, very easy to, you know, you don't always have to be going nine tenths to, to enjoy this car. Now the experience is absolutely incredible when you are going for it. The downside of when you're doing eight, nine, 10, 10 on this car is it's a very difficult car to heel toe. So the pedals are just spaced apart pretty far. Now they do make aftermarket pedal options that I think will definitely help you as far as being able to rev match. But on the street, I will find, I find this car is you know difficult to rev match. Now, obviously when you're just babing it like that and you shift, you can just blip the throttle like that and have no problem. But 
when you are driving fast, it's just, I find this to be one of the most difficult cars to heel toe. Um, you know, my MX-5 and whatnot, pretty easy car to heel toe, right? Pedals are really, uh, you know, close and most of the cars I've reviewed, pretty easy to do. Now, the other negative of driving a 350R versus a 350, which comes with Pilot Sport 4S tires, this one comes with Cup 2s. So this is a pretty bad road. You know, it's got a lot of just road rash and potholes and things like that. So this car with these Cup 2s and just the overall suspension setup of the 2017, 16, and 18 years, I believe in 19 they changed the suspension more toward the GT500, but it does tram line all over the place. So it's definitely a car that if you're going to be having some fun, you need to have your both hands on the steering wheel. You can't be doing a lot of this with this car. It's just not going to be forgiving. Um, now, once you are really going for it, I'm telling you, two hands on the wheel at all times. Now, when I'm just babying it like this around the back roads, not really an issue, but I wanted to mention that. Um, now, as we get into it, listen to that. You hear a little bit of intake noise from the K&N air filter, just a little bit of that beautiful sucking sound. You hear the exhaust. We are in sport mode right now on the exhaust. But really, guys, this is one of the all-time best-sounding cars and overall driving experiences you can have, period. I'm telling you, once you get past the tram lining and just the overall harshness, harshness of the Cup 2s, this definitely feels like a track car. Now, it doesn't necessarily beat you up with the suspension, but it's not a soft, gushy car, right? It's not a 1LE Camaro. You know, it's not a GT2 Porsche 911, right? It's not as harsh as a GT4 even came in, right? But you can make it that way if you go ahead and put it into track mode, which right here, you can adjust damper mode into sport. Now, now that we're in sport mode, it does feel very much like those cars I just referenced. But I love the fact that they still set it up for a pretty comfortable driving uh, for most of your dailies. But I'm, I'm telling you, when you do put that that into sport mode. Now again, you can also change the steering, right? So you can put the steering into sport mode. And let me tell you, when you do that, it really, really tightens everything up. So we've got the mode I'm gonna go ahead and put into sport. So this is now in sport mode. You can also put it in track mode, right? Again, track mode's gonna disable your traction control. You're gonna have all 526 horsepower. We're gonna have absolutely no TC. You can definitely do that on the street. This car is one of the more forgivable cars to do that with. You see what I just did right there though? I blipped the throttle, but I didn't get the rev match right. So again, it just takes a little bit of driving with this manual to kind of really get it dialed in, um, which I really find I like that about the car because it forces me as a driver to be more present and to be more engaged, right? Some cars, you just get in them, especially these Porsches today and a lot of these modern cars, they already have rev matching built into them. And so from hello, they're very easy to go 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 on. This car though, I'm telling you guys, you're going to have to just sit with it for a while. You're going to have to learn it. You're going to have to just kind of get used to the nuances of the way it tram lines, the way the suspension feels. The steering, it's nice and thick here and uh, it's very easy. It's got the, the Alcantara here, which... This car only has, you know, 3,000 miles on it, so it's pretty much like brand new. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm telling you, when you really want to go for it in this car, it's intimidating. Um, I remember when I first had the Camaro ZL1 1LE, right? That car was the same way. I mean, remember the first, like, maybe three, four weeks, I really had a hard time even going full throttle because it was just so much power and so much torque. This car, while it doesn't have that kind of power... I mean, you can just see like the overall drive. It's it's intimidating. It's loud. It's got a lot of power. You know, the engine weight is not exactly 50-50, right? Oh. But it is really rewarding when you get it right, guys. Like it really is a blast to drive, a lot of fun, a really great driving experience like it just gives you so much fun factor and so much like soul and visceral ugh, you know it just makes you love cars and 
if you're a car guy, like there are very few cars that do that, especially modern cars. Like you get in a GT500 and it's got 700 horsepower, but it's got the Tremec, you know, or excuse me, it's got the dual clutch and it just loses so much of that connected feeling that this car gives you. And there's no way to explain it unless you just get in the car and go for it, you know? You hear the backfiring. The Tremec is difficult, but when you get it right, it's so damn rewarding. It's just so much fun. Now, these Cup 2s are still not warmed up. I could just feel the car, right? But they're getting there. Give me about one more minute, and you can take that turn without slowing down. Just fantastic. Now the brakes, the brakes are very good on this car. The Brembos, they're very strong, pretty bitey, very progressive. Ah, oh, this car is just so good, guys. Like, I know I'm not going very smooth, and I'm not going smooth because it's really difficult to do in this car. I'm telling you, like. Like, check out all my reviews. Like, I'm a pretty decent driver. I do a lot of track driving, but I'm telling you, like, having to talk to you guys, having to focus on this car, it's not easy. Oh, but man, is it fun. And you can hear every time I let off the gas, right, you get that nice little back, you know, back exhaust fire, and it just... Again, it's just something about the car. It just, it's more than the sum of its parts. It's got such a soul factor to it that frankly, very few modern cars have. And it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, keep in mind, I'm shifting there at 6,000 RPMs when I could be shifting at 8,250. So when you're on the street, it's really difficult to just go nine or 10, 10 on this car because it's got so much horsepower that by the time you get to six or 7,000 RPMs, you're already exceeding the speed limit so proficiently, right? So in the end of the day, if you really do, you know, wanna have a good time with this car, you're gonna need to just take it to the track and, you know, let it run out there. But what I, what I am saying, guys, is that you don't have to be going all the way to the top of the red band to have fun. Whereas a Porsche GT4 or a 911, other than the Turbo S, the Turbo S is the exception. That thing has torque and power anywhere. But if you get in a GT3 and you wanna do what I'm doing right now, which is just stay between three, four, five, six thousand 6,000 RPMs, I'm telling you that car is not as rewarding as this one is because this one has so much more torque and that V8, just more displacement, right? So you can have a lot more fun without necessarily going all the way to the top of the rev band. If you want to, you absolutely can. And when I do drive this car, I typically will run it out maybe once or twice, getting on the highway, etc. when I can. But in general, you just don't ever really find yourself doing that because you can have so much fun at four or 5,000 RPMs. Like right there, coming out of that turn, I'm at 2,500 RPMs. I feel like I've got more than adequate torque and more than adequate fun factor, right? So you don't have to constantly feel like you have to downshift the car. Um, I know that's a little counterintuitive to what some of the reviewers are saying that there's just nobody home at two or 3,000 RPMs. I'm telling you, when you're on a back road like this, there's plenty of get up and go at two or 3,000 RPMs. Now, if you're on a track, obviously you're gonna wanna keep it between four to 5,000 RPMs because it is a linear high revving engine. You're only gonna get max you know, horsepower around 7,000 RPMs. And max torque, I believe, is in the high or low sixes. So if you wanna go ahead and really get the full performance, you're gonna have to run it out. Having said that though, you can just enjoy it on the street and just have a good time between three to five. You know, while I'm talking about some of the other things about the car and I got some traffic and I can't have that much fun, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the stereo and the Ford Sync system. I think it's fine. You gotta plug your phone in for Apple CarPlay in the 2017 model. Not a big deal. Bluetooth works just fine. You can go ahead and control you know, your audio and whatnot through uh, the controls in the car once it's synced to your phone. Sound system is 
borderline at best. Uh, it's, it's nothing great. Uh, and frankly, if you're going to be putting the exhaust into sport mode and whatnot, you're barely going to hear the sound system anyway. Uh, that's probably definitely something that if you wanted to put an aftermarket stereo in, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Um, having said that, though, at the end of the day, guys, like, you know, you don't really buy this car for the stereo. Uh, the other thing is the gauge mode. So you can put this and you can see all the different things that you're going to want to pay attention to on the track. Things like engine oil temp, air fuel ratio, you know, things like that, cylinder uh, temperatures, you know, all the things that uh, in the end of the day, you know, again, when you're on the street, maybe not so important, but if you're going to be pushing out on a 100 degree day or 95 degree day, you know, you want to keep an eye on those things just so you don't blow the motor up, you know, make sure that uh, the engine oil level is always reading good, but it gives, gives you a lot of data. Trans oil, voltage on the battery, you know, your distance to empty. Now I've got almost a full tank and it's only reading 282 miles. So like the new GT500, this only has, I believe a 17 or 18 gallon fuel tank. So we're not talking about a car that's gonna give you a lot of effective range. Keep that in mind when you go on rallies. Now this car, believe it or not, can get 20 miles a gallon, pretty much no problem on the highway. Whereas the GT500 with that gas guzzling, you know, 750, 775 horsepower engine, whatever it's got, will absolutely eat fuel. We're talking eight to 10 miles a gallon. So you're getting about 160, 170 miles of range out of a tank, which basically means every time you get in the car and do 90 to 100 miles, your, your low fuel light's gonna come on. People that tell me they, they own that car, they literally have to go to the gas station every two times they drive it if they wanna have any fun, which again, that's a positive of having the 5.2 liter naturally aspirated voodoo engine versus that you know supercharged engine so that's one thing to note it also will give you a digital digital speedometer it gives you your tire pressures here i'm running 34 pounds which is a little bit high for cup twos you probably want to keep it more towards 30 or 32 and if you're going to do any track driving probably run it around 28 uh, is where i'd probably want to be at that's what i usually keep my mx5 at um, other than that you know you've got trip fuel track apps that's kind of cool um, and again, these are only track only. You do have launch control, you have exhaust mode, you know, you can change things in here. You do have performance shift indicator, which is kind of cool. You can turn on the shift tone as well. You know, you can go ahead and set, you know, exactly what it is you want to go ahead and, uh, you know, shift at, shift light mode, you know, things like that. <laughs> it's kind of cool. <laughs> so yeah, you can actually set it uh, on your tack. have a shift tone if you want shift light intensity you can go ahead and make it a hundred and that's only in track mode which is kind of interesting isn't it you've got your accelerometer again that's cool you can see lateral G's so you can see here 1.5 has been the, the hardest brake we've had acceleration is only a 0.7 Again, fun, fun things, right, that you can do in this car. Lap timer, brake performance, a lot of stuff comes built into this car. They, they, they really kind of know, you know, who the audience is that buys a 350R. In the end of the day, it's intended to be a track car. Now, one of the things that you need to be mindful of if you do get the R with the Cup 2s is it is going to pick up a lot of rocks. Uh, just Cup 2s in general are very sticky tires, especially when they warm up. Uh, they're very summer tires as well, so if you do want to drive this car year-round, you're going to want to put a set of winter tires on the vehicle. Um, also keep in mind that, uh, you know, they're generally pretty loud. I mean, these tires have 3,000 miles on them. They're fairly quiet, but when you do get on a road like we were on a minute ago, it's just not as smooth as this. You're going to hear a lot more road noise. However, this isn't the worst car as far as interior noise. Because you've got that exhaust and just the overall, you know, fun factor of the car, like, it, it, it's pretty quiet in here if you want it to be. Uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's really not the worst car. Uh, from that point of view uh, from the point of view of interior noise is kind of what I'm saying all right coming on to the highway here
tell you, I need now that I'm on the highway, I really need to turn off that suspension. Wow, it is really, really uh, strong. Yeah, it really makes a difference when you're on the highway and you, you know, going over these bumps on 840 here. But in the end of the day, guys, just a great car. Like, I, 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 I want to be very clear. I don't really have any negatives when it comes to the driving experience of this car. Is it easy to drive? No, it's not. Is it easy to go, you know, 8, 9, 10, 10 on this car? It's not. I'm telling you, if you want to really have a great day to track, get an MX-5, get a GT4 Porsche, like you're going to be able to outdrive most people. If you want to have a good track day in this thing, you are going to have to man the F up, okay? You're going to have to really get your heel towing right. You're going to have to just understand that this car is going to bite you if you don't get it right don't get the downshifts right if you don't get the upshifts right so it's going to take you several sessions to really figure out what this car likes and how to drive it fast having said that if you're never going to take it to the track and you're just going to buy it for the collection name a car that's going to age better as far as looks sound trans like overall experience with the six speed I just don't think there's many cars that are gonna be better off than this in five, 10, 15, 20 years. I really don't. This car just brings together so much of what we as car enthusiasts love. And I think that's why it's gonna to continue to hold its value and appreciate. This is a 68,000 MSRP car that you currently can find on the used car market for anywhere between 75 and about eighty to ninety thousand dollars, depending on the model year. So there's still over MSRP to this day, and people are like, "Why the hell is that?" Well, because they're just great cars, and the reality is, very few of these actually ever sold at MSRP. If you were a golden ticket winner, you probably paid five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars over anyway from your Ford dealer because that was just the market price. If you bought it aftermarket, you probably paid five, ten, fifteen, twenty grand over. So they're just exchanging hands essentially at what people paid in the beginning. Every once in a while, you're gonna find a guy that was able to get MSRP for a really low mileage car like this. But in general, I don't think that's that common. Uh, I'd say that's probably 20, 30, 40%. Now maybe people will watch this video, and feel free to go in the comments and tell me you got yours for MSRP. Great job, hold on to it probably got some equity in the car and enjoy it for what it is you know not everything has to always be about the money and the value proposition right you can just enjoy things because we love it you know this is a safe place to put money at the end of the day in my personal opinion but man you can see how much the camera shook there on that bump I mean keep in mind when you are on the highway and you do hit some of these bumps I mean you're still in a 350R right you are in a track car um, even with the suspension on soft it just is what it is but overall, guys, I, I really love the car. Uh, I love the driving experience that it gives you. Uh, I love the fun factor. I just I just love driving it. I mean, I don't know what else to say, you know. It's it looks cool, sounds good, you know, it just it just checks every flipping box that I I want and and you know that I pay attention to and that I aspire to. And it does it for such a low price point. You know, you look at these new GT3 RSs that are going 550, 600,000 aftermarket right now, and you're like, that is a lot of money, guys, for a 3 RS. And, you know, this car for 75,000, 80,000 bucks, all of a sudden just looks like a screaming deal that's gonna get you, in some ways, better looks, better respect, better performance, not on a track, but just overall fun factor on the street. Because this car has that V8, because it's naturally aspirated, because it has the exhaust note, it's just fun to run it out between three to 6,000 RPMs. You don't always have to be blasting it through, you know, seven, 8,000 RPMs like I did once or twice today. And whereas the Porsche, I'm telling you, you get in that car and you're gonna get a big case of blue balls because you always wanna be banging it off the rev limiter because that's the way it's intended to be driven. That car doesn't love to be between three and 5,000. It loves between five and nine. It's a very linear power plant. I've driven a plenty of them, I know, okay? At the end of the day, guys, I hope you enjoyed my point of view drive. Uh, I'm gonna edit this so that it's nice and tight. Uh, but at the end of the day, I just give the thumbs up to the Shelby. Uh, it's something that I could, I could drive and, and talk about all day. It's just such a great car.
By the way, guys, just want to say a quick thought or two about the garage here. We've been working on this thing since November. I did a channel preview for you guys, which I think only 500 people watched, but I appreciate the folks that did. And that was talking about the whole plans and the renderings and the process. But we've got a wet bar going in over here. We've already got our custom cabinets. Those are soft closing doors, garage pools, kitchen grade stuff. You've got here high rise doors. You've got slat wall. My office will go up here, poker table up here. All this will have the railing. It's going to look incredible. Visualize maybe even two and or if I have got space for black tuxedo lifts. This is going to have those blue cabinets as well. And then over here, I'll either have two more lifts or I'll do a basically a two post so I can do a service. This staircase is gone. Uh, this hole here is where the iron staircase will go. So you'll be able to walk up the stairs here. You've got shower. Some tile bathroom here as well. You've got the, I mean, you can just see it's all just a mess right now, but it's gonna be all fixed up. This is gonna be basically a sunroom. It's really cool. And then let me show all you, right, here's the upstairs guys. So you, you know, this is where you're gonna basically come out and uh, plenty of space up here for my office. You'll be able to see the cars, the railing here. You still have a killer view here of my neighborhood. And then what else is cool too, is when the guys or myself wanna come out here have a drink, have a smoke, have a chat. You come out here to the beautiful two-story porch. You got a great view here. Plenty of space back here still to do lots of activities and things for the kids. Killer view. Ah, I'm just, I'm in love with it. What can I say? I love it. This will all be, you know, painted the same as the house here soon, but it's been a passion project. All this will have the luxury vinyl plank flooring. And uh, we'll do some shelving, whole house fan in here so we can actually suck out cigar smoke, have a return so we can have cigarettes and cigars in here and not stink everything up. So anyway, hope you guys uh, enjoy it. I appreciate your support over the years. I'm really looking forward to growing the channel and leveraging the garage so that I can pay for it and we can do more cool projects together. There's gonna to be a community event in here once a month as well. Anybody who's uh, allowed me over the years to do a review of their car is gonna be invited. You know, that's one of the perks. It's a, it's a thank you for, you know, working with me and allowing me to, you know, do, do what I'm passionate about. And I, I know every review that I've ever done with somebody has been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun for them. It's been a lot of fun for me. Uh, it's not a bit of, it's not about the money guys that's for sure you know it's just about the love of cars and what we what we do and you know what, what i'm passionate about i mean this is it you know i i think the shelby 350r is what i dream about you know and stuff like that and and that's why i love enthusiast cars and that's one of the all-time great enthusiast cars it's very very collectible i think it's going to be uh hold its value really well you know i bought this car for msrp and uh, frankly, I think I got a good deal for it. Um, and, and I know what you're thinking. Oh my God, you know, MSRP. Yeah, well, in the end of the day, you know, look, look at what a, you know, a GT500 costs, you know, back in the day. You're talking quarter million dollars for, a, you know, an original one with matching, you know, numbers on the engine and everything. So what is a 350R where they only made 3,600 of these going to be worth in, I don't know, five years, 10 years? I mean, this thing in 25 years, guys, when we're all EV, is either going to be loved and appreciated or it's going to be hated. Uh, it's really going to be nothing in between. I think it's going to be loved and appreciated. Uh, I don't think that they're uh, going to ever fall out of, um, you know, at least here in America, uh, favor, you know, with people and culture. I mean, just an iconic car, iconic company. And, uh, you know, they're still going to make fat. They're still making Fast and the Furious, if that tells you anything, right?